Hello, and thanks for tuning into this edition of Cultures of Las Vegas. I'm Max Darrow with News 3 Las Vegas, the local NBC television station here in town. November marks Native American Heritage Month, so today we'll be highlighting our Native American community here in Southern Nevada. As we begin our show today, it's important to acknowledge that here in Clark County, we are on the ancestral lands of the Nuwu, Southern Paiute, and I wish to pay respect to the history of the people who have stewarded the lands of Nevada for generations and continue to do so. We'll start our discussion today with Barbara Hartzell, who sits as the chair of the board of directors for the Las Vegas Indian Center. Barbara, thanks so much for being with us today. I'm very happy to be here. So before we get into what your organization does, tell me about your background first. Are you from Las Vegas? Yes, so I'm born and raised in Las Vegas and can trace my family back to um, at least seven generations on paper. My grandmothers, my grandmother, my grandfather, my great grandfathers, we've been in Las Vegas um, for since the 1800s. Okay, and that uh, you mentioned just before we got on air that you're a direct descendant of the Las Vegas Indian Camp, correct? Yes. Tell us what that means. So um, the Las Vegas Indian Camp is what is known today as the Las Vegas Paiute Indian Tribe. Um, back in the early 1930s, um, 1900s, uh, that was what they were called because they were not an actual federally recognized tribe during that time. We didn't have um, that kind of status, but under the Reorganization Act is when they became um, the new Las Vegas Paiute Tribe. Um, the Las Vegas Indian Camp um, is located on Main Street. Um, they st we're still there today. There's 10 acres that was designated to us from Helen J. Stewart. Um, and so it was where um, uh, Southern Paiute, Sunwu, they lived and they, um, uh, my grandmothers were domestic workers for um, Helen J. Stewart and also Walter and Anna Bracken. Um, they also had time, uh, um, spent time at Kyle Ranch. And then um, my great grandfather um, and my grand, uh, great great grandfather is a boxer, Indian Johnny Smith, and my um, great great grandfather um, was a well known cattle rancher. Um, and so he spent time on Wilson's Ranch as well as on the Las Vegas Indian camp. So um, our family goes back generations before generations. Um, same thing with my dad on my dad's side of the family. Um, he's from here. Um, and uh, same, yeah. So. Roots deep in the area. Yes. <laughs> So we haven't left really. Oh, well, it's a wonderful place to be. Yep. So you mentioned the, the communities on Main Street and still is on Main Street. Uh, that that brings us to another interesting point of the, the community here in Southern Nevada. We have a, a much larger Native American com community than many people may realize. Correct? Yes, we have at least according to the last census, we have a, um, over fifty thousand urban Native Americans here in Clark County alone. Um, that are not designated from the two specific tribal bands that are um, based out of Clark County. So when you say the two specific tribal bands, let's talk a little bit more about that because there are 27 different tribal nations in Nevada, correct? Yes. So then we have two here in town. Tell yes. us some more about that. So we have the Moapa Band of um, Paiutes and we have the Las Vegas, um, um, the Las Vegas Paiute Indian Tribe. Um, and so they are, uh, like I said, uh, Moapa uh, was a longstanding uh, prior to the Las Vegas Indian camp. Um, you'll know that a lot of us are related to each other. We've intermingled with each other because we come from the same families. Um, and so uh, during the time when we were still under um, agents, <laughs> Uh, we were under federal agencies from the gov uh, government. Um, Moapa was established, and then they kind of, um, and that's where the Las, that's why the Las Vegas Indian Camp was the Las Vegas, was designated that what they were because they did not have the status that Moapa did at the time of um, actually having a like a government that was running it. Um, they were doing farming, um, so they were already like. Um, having their community established while uh, La the Las Vegas Indian Camp was more of a uh, stop and go for some folks. And um, and like I said, it, it came from uh, what we've been told uh, is that Helen J. Stewart wanted to designate lands to the Paiutes um, of the area, those that worked for her. Um, and so that's where the 10 acres came from. And so they were able to use that to eventually establish themselves as a federally recognized tribe. 
Tell me what makes the Native American community so special here in Southern Nevada. Um, and I know it's not an easy question. There's so many good answers to it. It's the best of both worlds. It's being able to grow up in this massive city that everyone sees it as like a travel entity. This is where you come to vacation. This is where you come to um, enjoy yourselves. And then you have this very small 10 acres where I grew up with my grandmother, where we got to still remain very close to our traditions and very tied into our history of, and so it's like this special world within this big massive world. Like I love Vegas because it's Vegas and like, you know, you take your pride and like, this is our city, you know, we're known for all of these amazing things, but also I'm an indigenous native. I'm a native Nevadan in, in every sense of the terms because I got to have the privilege of being raised with my grandmother to carry on our traditions and um, respect who we are and know where we came from, even in the middle of this massive um, other world that we lived in. So tell me more about a little bit of the tradition that you hold very close to home and I'm sure many other people in our Native American community here in Southern Nevada do as well. So um, it's really just a lifestyle and a way of being. When it comes to our traditions, it's really the being indigenous is your tradition. This identity of who we are is a tradition and it's something that could have been lost. And so being able to hang on to anything and the ties that you have from generation to generation. My great grandmothers were basket weavers. Um, you'll see in Helen J. Stewart and Walter Bracken, um, Kyle Ranch, um, the Wilson Ranch, in these collections, you'll see all these massive baskets. And that's what my grandmothers did. They weaved baskets. Um, and then later my grandmother was sent to, well, all of my grandmothers were actually residential school survivors as well. But my grandmother who really raised me most of my life um, is a Stewart, um, Stewart Indian School residential survivor. And so she was what they declared an orphan. And so she was sent away, um, but you know, she didn't speak English. Her first language was Paiute. Um, and so when she came home and she was still able to carry on that she was able to speak her language, um, I went to her and was like, I want to dance. I want to do our dancing. And she was like, okay. And so it was, um, you know, making sure you got permission from your elders to do this. Um, you had to carry yourself in a certain way. You know, of course, no drinking um, and no drugs and, and like being very respectful, making sure that you serve your elders um, and that their needs are met uh, and being a good, um, a, a good representation for the youth coming after you. And so um, it was a privilege to have those that I still get to hang on to that. And especially knowing, like I said, like um, because my great grandmother passed away um, before my grandmother was born, like thinking of that the time I was spending with my grandmothers was the same as when she was spending time with her grandmothers and the time that they must have spent with their grandmothers. And we were able to hang on to not just the trauma, the ancestral, the DNA, that intergenerational DNA trauma that comes down, but being able to pass down who we are, where we come from, what we stand for, what we mean, and being proud and how, holding our head up high and not being ashamed of that anymore. And, and changing the narrative and pushing back of like, we're not mascots, we're not your Hollywood caricatures, we're human beings and we have our own identities and uh, we want to be respected the same as any other human is respected. Barbara, I can see how much pride you have in your community and in your heritage and it is a special thing. And I appreciate you taking the time to share this with us and thank you for everything you do for the Native American community and the Las Vegas community here in Southern Nevada. Thank you, thank you, it was an honor to be here. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Cultures of Las Vegas, the Native Americans. I'm Max Darrow. I'm joined now by Rulon Peet, the Executive Director of the Las Vegas Indian Center, and Tammy Tiger, the Civic Engagement Program Administrator for the Las Vegas Indian Center. Thank you both so much for being with us today. 
Uh, Rulon, I'd like to start with you today. Uh, tell us about the Las Vegas Indian Center. You've been involved with it since 2007. That's correct. Uh, I've been with the center since 2007. We've actually been in existence since 1972. Uh, we are located near Bonanza and Rancho at 2300 West Bonanza Road. Uh, the center has actually been there for, like I said, since 1972. It's been a, a community organization, almost like uh, if you want to call it a social service center. Okay. For um, It's for natives and non-natives as well. We do have programs that are designed for Native Americans, but there are other programs that we do have that, that uh, also provide services for the community at whole. So uh, we've been operating at uh, right now as a, as a slim type of uh, staff I guess you can say due to COVID unfortunately but the service that we do provide for the center are one is employment services we have a housing program where we have 12 units and it's an affordable housing program uh, we rent those out at a, at a rate that's a little bit cheaper than like at most places you can find in Las Vegas mm -hmm. uh, we do have a prevention program and that provo that program is pr uh, provided to help individuals with basic life skills um, we do have a dance class that's coordinated with that prevention program. So uh, individuals, whether you're young or old, are able to learn about powwow dancing, the, the meanings of it, and certain traditional dances that go along with it as well. So it runs the gamut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's our, our, one of our staff members, Karen Jensen, she's the, one that, she's the one that heads it up, and we actually seek young adults in the community to actually teach um, individuals, either they're young, like I said, or they're old, but we, we would like the community members to come in and join in and share in that and to be able to help them understand the qualities and the traditions of the, the Native culture. Yeah, and we also are involved in the, the uh, National Native Vote Initiative. Uh, we do have it um, periodically, every uh, actually every election year, but, but it, we've been involved with it and it's been an incredible opportunity for us to have uh, more exposure if you will for the center uh, once again bringing in the community because we want community members to be involved we want them to take part and have this be their own as well so we give them opportunities to do that such as we have Tammy here she's been involved with the center for ever since I started so you know it's it's been great to have her input and everything because she's she's a master of doing a lot of those you know civic engagements knowing what to do so it's like we we want to learn from the community we want to add their talents if you will to our programs to help us to be able to gain more programs to be able to help the community feel better especially in the native community i find that a lot of times that we we are a little um i don't know if you want to use the word timid just but kind of reserved where we want to be able to reach out to individuals, to programs, to seek services, but a lot of times we're just not sure why we need it or what we need to do. But, you know, we're here for the center. We're here for the people. We want to be able to provide those services and continue to gain more services for them as well. And Tammy, I know you are involved in civic engagement, but you have such a, a background. You have your hand in so many different pots here in town. <laughs> and you do so much for the Native American community here. Tell me about how young people, and not necessarily even young people, just folks can get involved. Well, Indian centers have been the lifeblood of our urban Native communities all across the major cities in the countries. Um, for a very long time, as he said, um, the center has been here since the 70s. I first went when I was 16 years old. And as urban natives, we're, we can become disconnected from our tribe and our families. And so um, being able to have uh, uh, programs that can bring everyone together is what we, what we strive for. So working with the youth um, can engage them at a younger age. They may not have relatives that they can turn to they have us to, as a community to come and uh, learn more about their cultures or big parts of pro part programs with natives from other tribes. And we have natives from tribes all across the land here, correct? We do. So uh, at our last um, community list that we reviewed, there was over 40 different tribal nations represented here in Clark County. Well, wow. that's amazing. I don't think a lot of people know that. Right, yeah, there's over 572 tribes uh, federally recognized nationwide. Um, I happen to be a Choctaw and Muscogee Creek Nation from Oklahoma. Um, and 
uh, Cedar Vermont Bend of Paiute. Paiute. Yeah. yeah, and from Cedar City, Utah. Okay. Yeah, I actually moved here to go to college, decided to stay here. And I do have relatives from, from you're going from southern Utah, actually northern Utah, all the way down to southern Nevada, up to northern Nevada. You know, so I do have a lot of tribal, a um, lot of tribal members here in Las Vegas and Moapa. I'm cousins with, okay. you know, so it's, it's Paiutes are everywhere, you know what I mean? Yeah. So <laughs> Definitely in Nevada. Yeah. yeah. So. As indigenous people, we feel that we're all connected, that we're all relations. And so it's important that uh, we can have a place like the Indian Center to come together. So you bring up in, as indigenous people, and I'd love to get to Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, yes. It was just celebrated here in Clark County. Yes, it was the very first yeah. time officially. H how special of a moment was that? I see you're, you're clapping and smiling. <laughs> and it, I mean, it, it was a big deal. It, uh, you know, it took some work. There have been years of um, proclamations recognizing indigenous people, um, not always on that particular day. Um, we chose that day to bring more visibility to Native Americans and indigenous people in general in our curriculum that um, is still taught in the schools, we were still talked about as historical context, not really like we're still here, we're still a part of this vibrant community, we're still here trying to protect the lands, get health care for our people and things that were um, important to our communities. So um, being able to have our county, which has the largest population of, of Native Americans in the state, um, was just a huge moment for all of us, and we hope to take that to the next level and go statewide. What was that celebration like? Can you can you bring me to a moment of it that sure, was just a special like, I moment? I mean, we all kind of like danced and did our, yeah, you know, our, <laughs> our calls, but uh, we um, culminated the celebration at the Indian Center with a beautiful mural of one of our community members that was done uh, by Gear Duran. Uh, an artist and um, and it was it was incredible yeah I mean the work he he did and but I'd have to say that I'm I'm really pleased and excited and grateful for the work that Tammy and others have did to to create this situation to where we do have Indigenous Peoples Day it was a lot of hard work you know so but um, we're grateful for it we all celebrated together and we'll continue to grow together as well so we have a, a vibrant and populous Native American community mm -hmm. here. Yes, very urban considering the landscape of Southern Nevada and Las Vegas. What is something both of you would like everyone else to know who might not know enough or might not know as much about the Native American community? What would you like them to, to know about this community here in Southern Nevada? And maybe Rulon, we'll start with you on this one. I would like them to know that we're here. You know, it's a lot of times we do get looked over, whether it's through the census or any type of uh, programs or whatnot. I'd like people to know that we are actually here and that we do exist. Uh, I want to spell the rumors that we do not get money from the government every month. You know, and that's a big thing because a lot of a lot of times our our members do seek services, but they have to come to the center in order for us to like provide a letter to them stating that they are not receiving any monetary funding from us you know and then that's their perception you know it's like well you guys are receiving money so why are you seeking public assistance that's not the case you know we're normal just like everybody else we live here we want to grow here we want to you know want to make Vegas strong we want to help out we want to be with the community you know we want to be counted in with the community you know and so just uh, I guess the acknowledgement to know that we are actually here you're more than welcome to come down to the center anybody is to come down and ask questions or whatnot that's how we want to be here you know so that people can see that yeah and Tammy same question to you well our tribes are sovereign nations and so our citizens um, sometimes they feel like they're only part of their tribe that's at home as a but we're nations in a nation so we want to provide a place where all of us can gather and share our culture and share um, spend time with one another and um, we've talked about starting a new program where we will um, bring together different members of different tribes and share some kind of stories or traditions with our youth that are here and just learn more about each other and have a place to be amongst our, our culture. Well, we're going to get to the youth in, in just a few moments, yes. but I just want to ask, I'd like to go check out this mural. Where could I go see it? It's on the side of our building at 2300 West Bonanza Road. Wonderful. Yeah, oh. it's it's an incredible. Uh, it's 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 beautiful. To be honest with you, mm -hmm. I think it is. It's, it's full of color. It's gorgeous. Wonderful. Yeah, 
Well, Rula and Tammy, thank you so much for being with us today. We really do appreciate the time and for sharing more about the Native American culture here in Southern Nevada. Most thank definitely. You. And uh, we will be right back. Welcome back to Cultures of Las Vegas, the Native Americans. I'm Max Darrow. I'm joined now by Dr. Crystal Lee, the United Natives founder, and Annika Rosine, a UNLV student who's very involved with the Native American Student Association among plenty of other organizations at UNLV. Thank you to both of you for spending some time with us today. Uh, and Dr. Lee, let's just briefly tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, yeah, it's Ea Bene. That means good morning in Navajo. Um, I'm gonna start off with my self-identity, which are our Dene clans, and um, Dene is how we identify ourselves um, instead of Navajo. So uh, my clans are Nato Dene Tachi Inishli, Nanish Eja Tambaham Bashishin, Senjikine Dashiche, Kinslichi Dashinele, and Tiso Arizona Ede Nasha. Um, so we had our four clans, and we are matrilineal derived with our clanship and kinship system. Um, so our first, my first clan is Red Running Into the Water. My second clan is Edgewater Clan. And so, thank you for letting us be here this morning. Absolutely, Annika, same thing to you. Mm -hmm. Tell us about yourself. All right, so hello, my name is Annika Rosine. I am also Dine. Um, my clans are Tohaglini and Bilagana. And um, yeah, so that's just about me. I am. Now, Miss Native UNLV, um, that's how I identify, um, although we would like to title the whole pageant as mixed to be gender inclusive. Okay. So something that we, we've spent a little time talking about in some of the previous segments today uh, has to do with traditions and the importance of both looking back but also looking forward. Um, I know United, Nat United Natives, you guys work to help connect youth and educate youth. Let's start with you, Dr. Lee. Tell us about how that plays into what your day-to-day -day is like. Okay, um, I just want to go back on to a little bit of background of why I founded United Natives. Sure. Like my granddaughter here because culturally by clanship wise she is my granddaughter and I'm actually her grandmother. We're uh, related by clan. So I'm going to refer to her as my granddaughter. Um, as my granddaughter here I was in college and when I was in college at the time, I recognized the need for more guidance and mentorship, um, especially from a culturally responsive capacity. Uh, I definitely had mentors who were my professors, but a lot of them were not Native, so I didn't understand the differences in um, cultural culturally. So therefore, um, I really needed people I could connect with when, I'm, when I wasn't back home on my reservation and who really understood the challenges as being um, in, a, in an urban space now away from your family and your community. So I thought, um, why not start something that could be distance-based? Uh, we could connect virtually. Um, and so I'm gonna make this a national program um, so we have the ability to connect even though we're in different places um, geographically uh, to fulfill a need that really exists uh, then when I was in college and then I'm sure she could talk about her experiences but um, <clears throat> so therefore I founded United Natives and um, it's founded as a youth-based mentorship program although now we have expanded outside um, to do other initiatives. And so what we do is we, we recruit Native American youth, um, particularly those who are in college, in post-secondary education uh, programs, and we have different um, ways of mentorship. Um, we have a civic engagement program currently that is mentoring them in the aspect of civic engagement. Um, we now have a youth council and they are doing um, a combination of not only civic engagement, but also culturally based activities, um, advocacy efforts, and we're really, um, a, a, they're applying their leadership skills to their community and, and um, bringing it in different platforms, but also bringing it back to the community. And Annika, from your perspective as a student in college, um, 
How important is that that tie and that link to mentorship and this also link to other people in the community? Yeah, so I would say mentorship is extremely important, um, especially if it's culturally based. It provides a connection to elders or maybe other people around your age who just have more experience. And I think that's a really great experience for um, just staying connected to who you are, feeling comfortable in your space and your identity. That's something that a lot of youth can lose, feeling like they don't have people around them who look similarly, who have similar experiences. Um, so clubs like NASA, for example, I think are really great for fostering that connectedness and um, really allowing students to discover who they are. So yeah, I would say it's very important for mentorship in that way. Okay, and I, I'm, I, I love the, the grandmother-granddaughter relationship. That was something I learned today, so thank you. Um, with a relationship like that, um, how important is it to have an understanding of where each other comes from uh, with, with a, a shared background? Um, I would just like to lay some further background. As the ne, um, our clanship system is the most important part of your identity because it allows you to recognize your kinship. And to us, connectedness is everything from a philosophical, from a cultural base, from a spiritual aspect, from a societal aspect, um, and all those realms uh, it all comes back down to your clan. And so that is your identity and that's how you identify yourself to the world, but also that, you know, you're also linkage to your ancestors too, because it's lineage derived. So it's been here as <clears throat> from time immemorial. So we know exactly who we come from um, as a lineage background. So um, it's important that we know so you know if if we didn't know our clans I would have never known that I'm her if I didn't know my clan I would have never known that I'm her grandmother um, and so that puts us I b believe in a special place because now that I know that I am her grandmother and that I can um, probably talk to her in a different way than I would somebody else or teach her or guide her in a different way um, and, and to me personally I feel more connected to her because I am related to her by our clanship system. And, and Annika, finally, uh, from your perspective as a younger member of the community, uh, how important is it to carry on tradition and, and this understanding of the importance of the community? Yeah, um, so it's extremely important. Um, language revitalization, keeping our culture is important because it retains that um, it has been lost over years due to assimilation, other factors. So um, making sure that younger generations are knowledgeable and try their best to learn from elders is, is um, a way that we retain our culture and make sure that it sustains itself. Um, and just to go back on clanship, um, I did get a little heat from Dr. Lee <laughs> for um, not knowing the full extent of my clan. And, um, we talked a little bit about the importance of that, and I realized that definitely. Um, when I realized that I was Topahit, we realized that we were related. So that's something that I really want to work on. And as youth, we're all imperfect, and we're subject to um, mistakes, not having as much connection or even access um, as others may have. So always trying your best and reaching out to who you can um, is really important for keeping that up and doing the best you can to retain your culture. Annika, Dr. Lee, I really do appreciate all the time you spent with us today. I could sit here and talk for hours and learn a lot more, but that's all the time we have for this show. Thank you so much for tuning in to Cultures of Las Vegas, the Native Americans. Have a great day.